Okay, now that we've dropped all of our equipment on the table and created a sterile field, now we are ready to go and scrub our hands. The first thing we need to do before we scrub is put on all of our personal protective equipment. The first thing Scott's going to put on is his lead apron. This apron provides a protective barrier between yourself and the x-rays that you're going to be exposed to in the lab. If you notice on this particular lead, there's a lead barrier in the front, but if Scott will turn around, there's no protection in the back. So you're going to want to make sure you keep this lead barrier between yourself and the x-ray tube at all times. Also, you're going to want to wear some safety goggles. These safety glasses, these particular safety glasses have a lead barrier in them to protect your eyes from the x-rays. Also, you're going to need something called a thyroid collar. The thyroid collar, you put around your neck and that, pr that protects your thyroid from any x-ray exposure. Um, Scott will put his mask on before he goes to scrub and then he will be ready to wash his hands. Also, if you choose to do so, you can wear protective shoe covers if needed. Now we're going to go ahead and demonstrate how to do a surgical scrub. First thing we want to do before we do a surgical scrub is we want to check and make sure we have all of our personal protective equipment on. Scott has his lead apron on, his thyroid collar, his glasses, his mask, and his hat. He also has a piece of jewelry on that needs to come off. Once Scott takes his jewelry off, he'll be ready to scrub. The first thing Scott's going to need to do is get his hands wet at the sink. Once he gets his hands wet, he can go ahead and grab a scrub sponge and open it up. Inside here, the contents are going to consist of a scrub sponge and a fingernail cleaner. That fingernail cleaner can be used if you have dirty gunk underneath your fingernails and you need to scrape it out. Okay, Scott's going to start with the sponge side of the scrub brush and he's going to scrub it on his arms. And what he's doing is he's, he's lathering up the soap on his hands and his arms right now. Because the sponge side is what contains the soap. Once he gets a good lather, he's going to go ahead and flip the sponge over and use the scrub brush side, and he's going to start scrubbing his hands. Now, Scott's going to need to imagine that his hand is like a box, and it has four planes, the top being one plane, the bottom being another plane, and the sides both being an individual plane. And what Scott's going to do is he's going to scrub five times on each individual plane. He's going to start from his fingertips and work down to his elbow. The reason Scott is scrubbing from his fingertips to his elbow is because he's, as he's scrubbing down, he's moving microbes that were at his fingertips, which needs to be the most sterile portion of his hands, down closer to his elbow. And then once he finishes one side, he's going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. This whole process should take approximately five minutes. Okay, now that Scott has completed scrubbing his hands, he's going to waste the sponge, and now he's going to go ahead and rinse. When he rinses, he's going to want to make sure he rinses from fingertips to elbows. He's going to kind of swoop his arms up underneath the water. Now Scott's hands are considered sterile, so he cannot touch anything that is not sterile from here on out. He's going to maintain his arms in his sterile field. Now that Scott has finished scrubbing, we're going to go ahead and show you how to get your gloves and gown on. Notice Scott has his arms up when he came into the room. 
The reason he's doing this because his actual sterile field is only between his waist and below his neck. Basically any part of the body that you can see yourself. And by keeping my hands in air like this, any water that's on my hands drips off my elbows so as not to recontaminate my hands. Now reach and take a towel off the field. And once this towel has touched my hands, I may not throw it back on the field or I would contaminate the field. And I'll dry my hands one at a time with each side of the towel so as to not con cross contaminate my hands. Now I'll take a gown off the field. The gown is folded in such a way that it is inside out so that the parts that will touch my body and will not be sterile anyway are the parts that I am grabbing. I proceed to put my hands inside the sleeves, taking care not to extend my fingers beyond the cuffs of the gown. Now Scott's not going to be able to tie his own gown because his backside is not sterile. So he's going to need a non-sterile member of the cat lab to tie it up. This is usually done by the circulator. As Mike is completing that, I'll take the gloves that I'm going to put on and I take the label and turn the gloves upside down so that the reading is upside down to me and then open the package. I place them upside down because of the technique that I'm going to use which is called closed glove technique. As I go to put the gloves on I reach my opposite hand over to the glove and pick it up. So, for my right hand, I'm reaching over to the left hand, what would be the left hand glove in front of me. You'll notice that the manufacturer wraps the glove so that the cuff is flipped up. And this is the thumb portion right here. So, when I begin to put the gloves on, I'm going to take my thumb, put it in the region of the thumb of the glove, slip my thumb underneath the cuff, then turn the glove over and flip the cuff up over the end of the glove making sure to maintain my fingers inside the gown of the glove. Then with the other hand, again keeping my hand inside the glove, I will pin the glove and the gown together and work my hand inside the glove until my hand is inside and the glove is over the cuff of the gown. Next I will repeat the process with the other hand. Again, picking the glove up now with my, uh, my sterile gloved hand. Thumb underneath the cuff at the point of the other thumb, the thumb on the glove, flipping it over, glove and gown together, and you pull your hand through until your hands are inside the gloves completely. Okay? We are now ready to arrange the table uh, and the sterile products on the table in a manner that will be efficient for doing the procedure. I can put my glove, my towels up here and you notice I came in from this side this is also the side that the doctor will come in when he scrub for the procedure so I'm going to place the things that he's going to need over here in reverse order that he's going to need them. He will glove last so I'm going to put his gloves on here this time with the label with the writing the right way up because we are going to gown him differently than I gowned myself. Then the gown and one of the towels because he will come in and of course dry his hands down the glove and then I will assist him in putting on his gloves. And then I can feel free to arrange the rest of the field in a manner which will be efficient for me to do the rest of the study. And Mike or a circulator person in the room will assist you by putting the fluids on the field. We'll put fluid in a couple of the bowls, and I'm also going to separate these two bowls here that we have. The blue one is usually used for contrast, perhaps later in the study, and the clear cup we normally use for lidocaine. So it's important when you're dumping fluids to maintain at least six inches from the table. That can be a little tricky when you're doing your lidocaine. You also want to try to stay as far away from the table as possible and try not to get over top of the table as much as possible. Once Mike has put the lidocaine in my clear cup, I will label it with a lidocaine sticker so that there's no confusing this with any of the other fluids on the field.
Now I'm going to go ahead and dump the rest of the fluids. This is what he's going to use to flush his catheters and everything else. He can also use it at a later time to wipe his wires and to clean his hands. We're going to separate it. That will end up being a dirty bowl, and this is going to end up being a clean bowl. And all the saline in here will be free of blood. The next step will be to demonstrate the flushing of the devices for the field.